Have you ever wanted to imagine what it would be like to play the ranked modes, but combined? Cause uh, I've gone ahead and done that. Some of these ideas, they can work. Some of these ideas are terrible and you'll get to hear all of them. Have you ever wanted to combine splat zones with Rainmaker? Uh, I hope so, cause that's one of them. We got a bunch of different options here and I've gone ahead and made three different options for every combination possible. So let's just jump right into it. Let's start with the original two modes, splat zones and tower control. How about we take the tower and it only moves when the top part is painted your color. Otherwise, you can stand on it all you want, but it's gonna go nowhere. <laughs> oh no! Or, or, what if the tower only moves when the path in front of it is painted? If you want the tower to move forward, you just gonna have to paint it in advance. That also means the enemy team could stop the tower on a dime from advancing just by painting the path in front of it with their own ink. And finally, what if the tower could move around, but only around the perimeter of a splat zone? <laughs> the splat zone here doesn't really matter too much, but it is a speed modifier. If it matches the team that's riding the tower, the tower will move twice as fast. The counter just ticks down the longer that you guys are standing on the tower, so it's not likely you could successfully loop around the zone without getting knocked off, but I think it'd be funny. Now let's do a silly one. Let's look at the first mode and the last mode that we got in Splatoon, Splat Zones and Clamlets. What if we could throw clams onto the zone and when they land, they're just, you know, automatically consumed by the zone and never to be seen again, bringing down a team's point count. Yeah. The enemy team can throw a power clam into the zone to force the count of the other team to rise back up though, which is, Kind of evil. Now this next one, it's just regular splat zones, but the clams also still exist. Little clams leave a path of ink when they're thrown over the zone, and big clams automatically repaint the closest one third of the zone that they're on. A great way to get close to retaking a zone. Lastly, you could do regular clam blitz, but let's just say the baskets are always open, unless the defending team has the area under the basket painted their color. Do you sacrifice a teammate to stand underneath the basket the whole time and just shoot or roll over constantly to prevent people from scoring? I don't know, man. And no, neutral does not count as safe, so someone's really gotta be over there painting that area. Or else, who knows when someone could flank on over and just start chucking clams in, I know. Now, let's keep the clams, but bring in tower control. These ones are also hilariously complicated, which is great. <laughs> Imagine the tower is the equivalent of a clam basket. It moves from one side of the map to the other, and either team can throw clams into it while it's open. However, the value of each clam thrown in this has been lowered for this mode. Two points per little clam and 15 for a power clam. The basket will still close if not enough clams go in to keep it open, and a free power clam will spawn only for whichever team has a higher point count remaining after the clam volley is over. If we want to keep things similar to regular clam blitz though, why don't we just take the clam basket and make it circle around the bases? <laughs> Players will have to time their pushes carefully to make sure they don't show up when the basket is at the very far end of the enemy base. Maybe having a flanker would be really advantageous for this. Aight, aight, one more. Tower control? But the tower's not gonna move from the center of the map for a team until 30 points of clams have been scored in a clam basket located at the center of the map. This basket is shielded and needs to be open with a power clam. There are then little tiny checkpoint clam baskets that require 30 more points of clams to progress before the tower will continue to move. Making the checkpoints, you know, actually mean something maybe along the way. And finally, when you get to the end, there is one more basket where you just have to deposit 10 points worth of clams and then you win. And no, the baskets won't activate until you reach the checkpoint, meaning that teammates can't just run ahead in advance to get a quick win later. Sounds like a mess. <laughs> ooh, ooh, speaking of messes though, here's Rainmaker and Clam Blitz put together. Consider her first regular old clam blitz, but there are no power clams. Instead, the basket has to be opened with a fully charged shot from the Rainmaker. There's a Rainmaker available for each team in this mode, just that so nobody can like 
hoard it and prevent anything from happening. However, if the Rainmaker carrier is splatted, the Rainmaker will always reset back to the center of the map. Or alternatively, let's try regular Rainmaker, but everybody is slow. By collecting clams, the players are able to move faster. It takes five clams for a player to move at base speed. They move at half speed with no clams, and maybe as quick as twice as fast if you have a full-on 10 clams? And you know, the power clam in this could still exist! So you could throw it to a player who is gonna, you know, take the Rainmaker and give your team a massive advantage! And then, uh, finally, we could have a Clam Blitz mode where instead of having power clams, a clam could have a different score assigned to it, depending on how much you charge it before it's thrown. Maybe starting at 1 and moving up to 8 or something like that. I think 10 might be a bit much. A fully charged throw is needed though to open the basket. You still have a hankering for chaos? What about a little bit of Rainmaker and Splat Zones? Was that... You want more Rainmaker shenanigans? Okay, okay. How about... uh The Rainmaker carrier can only progress efficiently through their team's ink. If they step on neutral ground, the Rainmaker timer will start decreasing faster, and if they step into enemy turf, oh no, it's going down real quick, better get back on your ink! <laughs> How about classic splat zones, but nobody has a weapon! In this mode, everyone has a smaller version of the Rainmaker equipped. No subs, no specials. Players still have to paint the zone to win. Nightmare. <laughs> And thirdly, how about we have an unshielded Rainmaker that sits at the center of a Splat Zone marked area? There's no advantage for painting the Splat Zone though. Instead, the goal is to hold the Rainmaker as long as possible without getting splatted to bring down the team timer. Sounds good. It would make holding the area near the Splat Zone just as important as keeping your teammate alive, honestly. And then, we have what's probably the most convoluted of all of them. <laughs> You thought tower control and clam was a mess? How about tower control and rainmaker? These are all a doozy. Okay, number one. Imagine you have a rainmaker that is permanently attached to the tower. Similar to a cannon, when you swim onto the tower, your controls can optionally be altered to allow you to only use the rainmaker. The tower moves twice as fast when you're riding the tower while also holding the rainmaker, so that's a great incentive to use it. Only one player can operate the Rainmaker at a time, and there's a 5 second cooldown if the Rainmaker carrier is splatted. Otherwise, it's just normal tower control. But what's that? You want something more Rainmaker-y? Okay, alright. Imagine a Rainmaker mode where there is no podium. Instead, your goal is to just hold the Rainmaker as long as possible to bring down the team's timer. It's similar to Shine Thief in Mario Kart, but there are clear boundaries about where the Rainmaker carrier cannot pass. So in a way, you're kind of like a giant walking tower waiting to get shot at. <laughs> you're just carrying the Rainmaker around instead. If the Rainmaker carrier leaves the allowed zone, they'll have three seconds to get back inside before they instantly are splatted. So you better stay near the middle of the map. And, and probably move around a bit. But if you want a bigger range of motion, how about we force you to walk around like a real tower? In this one, the Rainmaker carrier must travel by foot from one side of the map to the other. They are not allowed to swim and must follow the designated path on the map. At two specific checkpoints along the map, the Rainmaker carrier has to stop and wait before they can progress. When the Rainmaker carrier is in these checkpoints, no one else is allowed to directly walk up to the carrier, but they still can fire at them. Uh, good luck! Too bad we don't have Big Bubbler in this game! <laughs> While we're sitting around here twiddling our thumbs waiting for Splatoon 3, it's funny just to think of ways that we could absolutely ruin Splatoon 2. <laughs> Do you have any other ways that you want to combine both modes to make something sillier? Did you enjoy my probably excessive descriptions of how these modes might be able to function? Did you find it fun? Because I did. I had a lot of fun writing this down, honestly. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoy some nice, regular ranked out there. If you liked what you saw, give me a subscribe and I'll make more silly fun Splatoon content like this. Thank you very much! See you later.